Hi, my name is Bastian Matteau and in today's video I would like to give you a very simple explanation of the super function in Python. Now for this video I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the, the basics of object-oriented programming in Python. Um, you don't need to be an expert, but just that you know what the class is and what an object is and that you're familiar with the dunder init function to initialize objects, etc. And then I'm going to show how you can use the super function in object inheritance. Now all of that sounds maybe a little bit complicated, but the goal of this, function, of, of this video is that to, to give you a very simple and intuitive understanding of how this works exactly. So uh, let's start with this, uh, this, this toy example. Here we have a class called portishead uh, that represents the, the group portishead and it has an init function, the dunder init function and the only thing that it does is when it's initialized it prints out portishead so that we can see that, port, that this class has been initialized. Then we have another class, Kanye West. Kanye West inherits the class Portis hat, right? That's what it means. If you have a, function, a class name and then between parentheses you have another class name, it inherits Portis hat. And in this example, the inheritance means that Kanye West has been inspired by Portis hat. That's what it means. Um, now, of course, Kanye has been primarily inspired by Kanye, but also a little bit by Portis hat. And in the, the init function of Kanye West, it prints out Kanye West, and then, and this is a key uh, point of object inheritance, it actually calls the init function of Portis hat, so that Portis hat also has a chance to initialize, right? So Portis hat refers to the class Portis hat here, and the dot init function refers to this function. So what we will see then is that first Kanye West is initialized, then in turn the, the mother class of Kanye West, Portis Hat, is initialized, and it will print out Kanye West and then Portis Hat. So if I run this, right, so here we're initializing, we're creating an instance of the Kanye West class that we're calling Kanye West, using the Python style convention that class names have this kind of camel case, right, with, with uppercase letters, whereas object instances uh, have lowercase separated by uh, uh, separated by underscores. That's just a convention so that you can kind of tell apart what the name of a class is and what the name of an object is. Okay, if I run this up here in the in the terminal on the right hand side, the console, you will see that it does what uh, what you would expect it to do. So here we see the output. First Kanye West, print it out here, and then port this out head, print it out here. All right? Okay. So far, so good. I'm going to assume that you kind of follow this, right? That you're familiar with this type of object-oriented programming. Now, how can we change this to use the super function? So what does super do? Super is simply an alternative to this kind of calling of the mother classes. So here, what we're doing is we're explicitly saying that we want to call the init function of Portishead. The super function allows us to be a little bit more general and it allows us to say, okay, Super, so, and super then refers to the, the, the mother class of Kanye West without us being actually explicit in the fact that this is Portis head. And then we're saying init. And we don't actually need to specify the self keyword, right? Um, if I run this, I will run it here, up, and then you will see here in the console, it will do the exact same thing. So this, what we've done now, we've used the super keyword, the super function, um, to accomplish the same thing that we did before by really explicitly calling the init function of the Portishead, uh, Portishead class. You will see that actually in many cases, the vast majority of the cases, whether you use the super function like this, or whether you're explicitly calling the base classes like this, makes zero difference. It does the exact same thing. Um, only in very rare cases that I will explain in a bit will you see the difference between super and this explicit base base class references. Um, you will also sometimes see this super Kanye West up comma self. So you're allowed to pass to the super uh, function uh, the the name of the class and self, but it's not necessary. So if you see this, or if you see this, it's the exact same thing. So I will, of course, for, uh, you know, because it's nicer and cleaner to write it like this, I will write it like this. Okay. So now you see we've, we've used super, but we actually, the, at most, we made our code a little bit cleaner, but we didn't really functionally change anything. And also right now, it's probably not clear to you what the difference is between super and explicitly calling the base classes like this. So let's, let's elaborate this example um, in a way that will actually make the difference clear. 
So I will remove this super keyword, this super thing, and we will go back to simply calling the base class explicitly. And then I will create another class, oh, another class, and that is ASAP Rocky. And ASAP Rocky is also inspired by Portishead. Up, ASAP Rocky. Um, so now we have two classes that have been inspired by Portishead. This is simple, right? What we have now is sort of a triangular a hierarchy. So we have Portishead at the top, and on the one hand we have Kanye West, and on the other hand we have we have ASAP Rocky. But now, what we're going to do is actually create a diamond structure through so-called multiple inheritance. That sounds really complicated, but it's not. So I will duplicate this, oh, and uh, I will create a class called ASAP Sebi. That's me. That's my ASAP mod name, and ASAP Sebi is inspired by ASAP Rocky and Kanye West. ASAP Sebi. Now, um, then here, of course, I need to actually explicitly call the, the init function of ASAP Rocky. And I also need to explicitly call the, the init function of Kanye West. And then here below, I'm not going to initialize instantiate Kanye West, but I'm going to instanti instantiate ASAP Sebi. All right. ASAP Sebi. There we go. So now we have a so-called diamond structure. Because at the top, we still have Portishead. Then we have, on the one hand, we have Kanye West. On the other hand, we have uh, we have ASAP Rocky. But then at the bottom, whoop, we have ASAP Sebi, right? So we have this kind of diamond structure. And this is multiple inheritance. What you're seeing here, the fact that ASAP Sebi doesn't just inherit from ASAP Rocky or just inherit from Kanye West, but from both, that's called multiple inheritance. And now we will see that we will actually run into kind of a weird issue. So if I run this, it will run. It's not incorrect. I will run it. Up. And you will see, if we look here at the output, you will see ASAP Sebi that comes from here. Then ASAP Sebi calls the init function of ASAP Rocky. And that's what we see here. Right. Up. Then ASAP Rocky calls the init function of Portishead. That's what we see here. And that's here. Then, actually, ASAP Sebi goes to calling the init function of Kanye West. Up. And that's what we will see here, Kanye West. Kanye West, in turn, also calls the init function of Portishead. And then Portishead is printed out again. So what we're seeing now is uh, something that is very undesirable, namely the init function of Portishead is called twice. And why? Well, because of this diamond structure, right? ASAP Sebi first calls it like this, and then like this. All right, and now we see that this explicit base uh, this explicit base class calling actually is problematic in multiple inheritance because you run the risk of calling an init function or some kind of other function multiple times, which is generally not what you want to do, right? And here, what we've done is actually call the init function of Portishead multiple times. And generally speaking, one call to an init function is enough. Now, how can we solve this with, uh, by using super? We can solve it simply by reducing all the explicit base class calls to using uh, super. So it's really simple. Uh, so I will do that and then I will show you how it works and then I will actually trace through the code so that you can follow what then happens because it's a little bit strange, but it, uh, it's, it's also elegant in a, in a Pythonic kind of way. So we just replace this by super, just like we did before. Up. And we're just going to do that everywhere. So rather than, rather than being very explicit, we're, we're saying, okay, just call the super init, init function of the super class. And then the super function is allowed to figure out what the best way to do that actually is using following the so-called method, method resolution order. And you also see right here, it is clear. So we, this super refers to Portishead, generally speaking, or does it actually. This super also refers to, to Portishead. But you see for ASAP Sebi, it is actually, we're just calling the super once. We're not calling it twice, once for ASAP Rocky and once for Kanye West. We're just calling it once. And then we're allowing the super function to figure out for itself what it should do with that. So if I run this, up, you will see that it works. And it works actually better than before. Because now you see that first we call ASAP Sebi, then we call ASAP Rocky, then we call Kanye West. And then we call Portishead. In other words, each class is only initialized once rather than initialized twice, as was the case before uh, for Portishead. So that's good. But how on earth does this actually work? Um, well, 
it works as follows. Um, the I will, what I'm going to do now is not just run it, but I'm going to run this in a debugger so that you can so that we can trace step by step what actually happens. So I will remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this. Oh, right, pause. To simplify the code a little bit for the debugger, I will send set a breakpoint here so that we start there. Then I will go to run, run file and debugger. I actually have a, a video also on using debugging to explain this in more detail. But for now, all you need to know is that I will walk through this code one line at a time and we will see actually how this code is executed and that makes it much more intuitive to understand. So the first thing, I'm here now I'm at the debugger prompt. The first thing that I need to do is press C to continue and then uh, we will go to this line. That's where we are now. ASAP SEBI, ASAP SEBI. We're instantiating the code. Then I step one step, for, uh, step. I say S for step, exit, go to the next line. Then we see, we go to the init function. And then we go, of course, to the super call. And now the question is, what is actually happening here? Hup. If I execute this, you see that this super function decides that this init function is actually the init function of ASAP Rocky. That's where we are. Then in ASAP Rocky, we go to that init function. And there, the it super function is called again. And now you see the actual power of uh, the super function. You see that ASAP Rocky, when it calls the dot init function, the, in the init function, it actually doesn't call Portis head, even though it inherits from Portis head, but rather it actually calls the init function from Kanye West. In other words, super is f aware of the fact that ASAP Rocky is actually not just being combined with Portis head here, but also being combined with Kanye West in this diamond type of pair of diamond type of hierarchy. And it takes that into account when deciding which init function to call. Where when we were calling the base class explicitly, we couldn't do that, right? Because when we were defining the class ASAP Rocky, we didn't know that at some point some class would inherit ASAP Rocky and mix it with Kanye West. That's a strange thing to do. So we could not actually take that possibility into account when we are defining ASAP Rocky. And that is inconvenient, problematic when you're doing multiple inheritance as we're doing here. But the super function allows you to call the, the sort of the the, a base function in a in a way that is agnostic, that is not aware exactly of how all the functions inherit each other and allows the super function to sort of figure out for itself which function should be called when. Uh, and that is very convenient, right? So now we're calling up, Kanye West. We're going to that soup up. And then of course, Kanye West, when it calls the super init function, it will actually go to Portis head. Portis head does, not, does nothing in this case. And then we're done, all right. Um, so this is how this works, right? So here you see the benefit of calling the super function. The super function allows us tr to traverse all the init uh, functions in a way that makes sense and doesn't, uh, doesn't require us to hard code in our classes, which, which, what, how the sort of the hierarchy of the classes relates to each other. Um, and that is, that is the use essentially of the super function. Now, um, I should say, that in real life, in real life programming, these kinds of diamond structures are very rare. So in many cases, whether you use the super function or whether you explicitly call the base class as I did at the very beginning of this video, doesn't really make any kind of difference. And in, then, in that case, it's more of an aesthetic choice whether you prefer to use super like this or whether you prefer to really say Portis had dot in it. Then it doesn't really make any real difference. Um, and that I think is also what gives rise to a lot of the confusion between explicitly calling base classes and using super because the difference is obviously not, is quite often non-existent. But there is a subtle difference that arises in these complex multiple inheritance situations. The simplest one uh, I've actually illustrated here, sort of the diamond inheritance, but there are even more complicated structures that, that, that would require super, the use of super in the same way. So now you kind of, I hope you kind of understand what super does I hope that you understand that it is not, strictly speaking, an, equ uh, a, a, an equivalent to explicitly calling the base class, but that nevertheless, in the vast majority of use cases, they accomplish the exact same thing. And that only in very complicated use cases with multiple inheritance, you will actually see a difference between using the super function and explicitly calling the base classes.
I hope, uh, I hope that this was an informative video. Thank you very much for your attention and happy coding.